Hey, brother. Shalom. How are you, mate? I'm doing all right. How are you? Very good. Very good. Nice to see you. I, I can't see you. You can't see it's, me? No. Uh, try this. Oh, there you are. Is that better? Yeah. There you go. Push that up a bit. There we go. Fantastic. It's a bad time. No. What time is it for you? Oh, it's 11 o'clock, I guess. PM. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, just got all the kids to bed and everything. We've been celebrating, you know, Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's Happy New Year. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, of course. Yeah. And uh, how old are your kids? Oh, uh, <clears throat> they range from 8 to 16. Yeah. We've got uh, three girls and a boy. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I know you you've been blessed with all sons so far. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the girl. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, that's right. Okay, so it's kind of the same, only uh, other way around for myself. Yeah. Well, we've yeah. got uh, we we've had lots of um, uh, estrogen in our our experiences as a family, and uh, me and my son, we just try to balance the equation. <laughs> Wonderful. This I've never called anybody from all the way across the world before. Oh, this is great. This is wonderful. I feel... You know, you I feel, do it all the time, doing uh, doing uh, uh, Torah talks and everything. But. I'm still very new to it, though. This is all I do. The the guys at the radio network, they just do... They do they're just Skyping and having conversations and having convers and typing and doing all these things at once. And it's just... I just go, oh, my goodness. I just sit there and make one call at a time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, for some people, this is their only uh, this is their only phone that they have. Apparently, I guess it's relatively cheap. I don't know, but it seems like it'd be kind of a yeah. challenge. For me. I've only been working on computers for about maybe three years. I guess. Yeah. Hasn't been a long time. So. Yeah. I feel bad now. I put the I put a, a graphic of a really old fella in the newsletter. I didn't know you were a young bloke. Oh really? No. Oh, that's right. You've never seen me I've before, have you? Never seen you at all. No. <laughs> I, I got forgot. I, got, I know your face very well. I got so, this. Yeah. I got this old bloke in a little butler's outfit. I'm gonna have to get rid of that. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. no. I, I've kind of been accused of that my whole life, actually. <laughs> I've all hung out with people older than myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's what my dad looks like. You nailed my dad pretty good. <laughs> Well, there's not too many. There's not a lot of people in our experience, so I just figured, with all this understanding you've been coming forth with, I figured you're an old bloke. Oh, so that's wonderful. Well, uh, that's a compliment. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of the people I meet in in the Natureem, yourself included, seem like yeah. old souls. That's mm. probably what it is. You know, we yeah. we may not really. Uh, we may not really have uh, what some people might consider a lot of life experience just based on what we've gone through, but you know, what we learn from it, what we pull out of it is yeah. pretty deep. So, yeah. uh, you know, and, uh, well, Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was uh, uh, talking to my friend the other day, uh, Chris and I was saying I should do a, a show with younger people didn't know you were a young person, mate. We could do a show. We could do something. Have a, we'd chat about stuff. Why not? I I wouldn't mind. I, I um, have always been kind of happy, like working with the Torah Institute, to to be able to counsel people and give them that insight. You know, just because I started learning about Hebrew roots a, a while back, and uh, I've gone through a lot of. I guess stages that I see happen over and over again. Mm. You know, it's, it seems like the same pitfalls are in line for every person that finds, uh, or, or that Yahushua finds, you know, mm. whenever they actually open up their hearts and, and, and begin to accept things like that. It's like this very predictable series of events start taking place. The very first one, you know, I try to tell people the very first one you're going to get is, Oh, you know, <laughs> you just learned about the name and the Sabbath and the Torah. Yeah. I got an idea. Why don't you go tell everyone you know? Yeah. 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 And 
And so we're, you know, brand new Nazarene, and we've got this sort of impression that, yeah, we're, we're supposed to be bringing the truth to the nations, mm-hmm. you know, and we have, it, no idea. we have absolutely no idea how to do that. <laughs> you know, so the first thing you do is start telling your parents and everything. I still remember when I told my dad that that pagan that uh, that uh, Christmas came from a pagan holiday. Oh. You know, his reaction was very blunt. You calling me a pagan? I was, Whoa! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you love the Messiah a whole lot. I'm just trying to yeah. tell you that this here uh, practice, you know, we need to really consider whether or not that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, obviously. You know, never, uh, not always very well received in our own countries, are we? <laughs> our own lands. Yeah, our own, our own My mom actually came to me. That was, that was probably a decade and a half ago. Yeah. My mom came to me last holiday season and uh, told me, did you know that uh, Christmas actually was uh, from a, a holiday called Saturnalia? And I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of been trying to tell you that for about a decade. <laughs> she doesn't think it makes any difference. Of course, mm. you know, we can just put some lipstick on that pig. <laughs> it, it's fun. Yeah. But, uh, not to be disrespectful to my mother. At all. No, no. But, you know, you know, just the mentality. It was uh, a bit of a shocker when she told me that. So where do you live? Do you live anywhere near Louisville or? No, I'm probably, oh, I'm at least a half a day, probably three quarters of a day drive from Lou. I, I'm down in Texas. Texas, all right. Yeah, I'm I'm about ten miles south of Austin. Okay. Oh. Austin, Texas, is the capital of uh, of Texas, and also in a lot of ways considered sort of the the liberal. Um, nerve center i think for for all of texas there's not a lot of liberal activity and do you know what liberal is i'm sorry uh that's political isn't it that's liberal yeah. liberal against um what's the other one conservative conservative yeah yeah, yeah. sort of left wing right wing whatever there yeah. there uh, a lot of people who are liberals kind of have a tendency to take things more towards uh you know communism and things like that and then and obviously, uh, uh, the the conservatives have a tendency to take things more towards like fascism. You know, yeah. uh, you have the potential for um, what Hitler, I suppose, with that. Yeah. I, I don't really get into things political. My personal viewpoints aren't all that popular. You know, I happen to believe in a messiah-run monarchy as long as we have the right messiah. Yeah, of course. You know, <laughs> we're just proven. Uh, we just had a. Um, uh, our president, Obama, just signed, or I guess it was re-ratified or whatever. He just signed an executive order last Friday that has a lot of people pretty well concerned. It was apparently first implemented back in the 1950s uh, for the Korean War, uh, you know, end of the Cold War, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they, um, for emergency purposes, gave the president all of a sudden all this power where they can... It, he can take everything in the country oh. in peacetime or in wartime is, is the, uh, the, uh, my wife's talking to me from behind me. It's kind of hard to talk when I'm listening to her. Oh, bring her in <laughs> <laughs> in peacetime and in wartime. Uh, he's able to take all the reserves out of the country. That's, I mean, uh, you know, any resource oh. that's, uh, guns, yeah. uh, precious metals, um, you know, cars and things like that, even civilian transportation. Uh, but that doesn't not include even the citizenry. Guess what? I, you know, I happen to be really good at um, carpentry, say. Yeah. And we need a carpenter. So with or without pay, we can take you and make you work for us because, well, we're in a series of na- or, uh, a situation of national crisis. And they can take all this stuff un- under a section of it called, it was 303B uh, of this executive order. It states that we can even take it, and if it is determined we don't need it, but it's in the public's best interest, we can stockpile it. Oh, my goodness. So, 
the reality here, you know what I'm saying? This thing was just signed again. And in the hands of a guy like we've got in, in office right now, I, I don't like it anyway. But in the hands of the guy we got in office right now, that type of power could be very easily abused. And how do you stop it once you unleash it? Mm. Once you unleash the dog, once you unleash this beast, how do you get it back? Mm. If it's determined that for some reason America's attacked or something like that, it's determined for some reason we need to use the power uh, given to the president in this particular situation. Yeah. How do you get it back? You know, and is the guy that mm. we have enough responsible enough to do that? Mm. At any rate, uh, it's kind of King Obama now. Uh, <laughs> with something like that, you know, he, mm. he can do whatever the heck he wants. Mm. He can come and do whoever he wants. He can do whatever he wants with anybody or anything. So mm. pretty much it all belongs to him. We're just proving that men can't do this. Mm. Men can't run the government. You know, we have to turn and kneel, mm. bow. Let him take care of it because he's the only one that can. You know what's actually causing all this to really take place in this country is something that is plaguing us from way back when. And that's um, slavery. Mm. Now, because we had some people in the South who would not let go of this evil. And because the Constitution was written while slavery was taking place. There are whole hordes of people that are willing to throw the document away. Hmm. You know, and it's the only thing that really allows those liberties to prevail in a situation where the government tries to take over. So you throw it out and you got no, we got no leg to stand on anymore. But it's because of that slavery. And I mean, obviously, Yahuwah, to some degree, believes that that's what's going to have to happen because he's letting it take place. Hmm. Whether... You know, throwing it, uh, throwing it out is uh, is going to happen or not. Mm. It, uh, whether or not the people who are wanting to do that are thinking clearly and being good people, w which they're not. <laughs> you know, they just want power. But uh, uh, he's allowing it to happen. I mean, the truth was, slavery was pretty bad. That mm. that's you're not supposed to people put people in slavery. And if this is the ultimate determination of a consequence for that behavior? Well, mm. who might argue? Yeah. It, it just proves it again. We mm. cannot do it. We can't see all things. Mm. You know, Constitution and this American experiment might have been the most wonderful thing. Mm. But we can't see all things. He can see all things. See, he would know that. He would say, you know what, guys? Before we ratify this document, we need to get rid of slavery. Because... <laughs> 200 years from now, they could cause a big problem. People might decide that because we were being bigoted, biased in our opinions, because while we were talking about all this freedom, we had, we had slaves, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they might not agree with that at some point in time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, to them, it was this big, you know, uh, and a problem this big. Mm. They weren't thinking about this, what they considered this little thing and a problem this big while they were trying to work out their philosophies hmm. but well <laughs> yeah, messiah run monarchy man yeah that's the only way to go so do you um do you keep your nose in the current affairs generally you know what's going on around everywhere you watch the news and stuff it shows up in my life whether i like it or not but no hmm. not really yeah. uh, i'm studying i'm a student i try to stay busy you know working and uh and um just studying, really. Yeah. There's stuff that you can't ignore. And mm. sometimes I'll speak to people and they'll make me aware of things. That's how I found out about this executive order, actually. A friend of mine told me about it. And I was like, well, really? No, I got to go look this up. I got to make sure I'm being told the truth. and mm. Go and check it out. Read it for myself. That kind of thing from the White House website. And sure enough, scary wow. stuff. Well, <laughs> scary if you... If you don't know you who, oh. to me it's just footsteps, you know. Hey, you hear him coming? Yeah. <laughs> hear him coming? Yeah. We should. Hey, uh, how about, do you stay up in current affairs? What? What? So? Oh, not at all, mate. Everyone has to tell me what's going on. I don't, I don't have a, a time in the world to do to watch all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Or, uh, yeah. Sounds like you and I are kindred spirit on that. Man. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say we should do a, uh, like a, as I spoke to Lou about it ages ago, but we don't seem to have the time, like a, a Matthew 24 type media watch type thing where you, you're keeping track of current events. But if, you're, if, if we're both the same, then we'll be hopeless at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. We could talk about how much we don't care uh, yeah. or how much it doesn't matter, I guess yeah. I should say. It's not that I don't care. I just, yeah. I mean, I, I remember last week we had our spring break. And gosh, I guess you guys are in the Southern Hemisphere. Are y'all are y'all seasons backwards from ours? Or backwards, what? Opposite of ours? I think so. Like, we're, uh, we're coming into spring. Sorry, autumn, autumn. You're coming into autumn, yeah. so you have you have colder months during the during the later uh, or during the uh, mid months of the year. Yeah, what we would consider summer, you consider winter. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, we just started doing spring break. We're just now coming into into uh, spring, mm. and um, I I took our children up to see their grandparents. That's Tina. Hey, Tina. Come Hello. say hi. This How is my you? wife, Tina. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. Finally to talk to you. Oh, I've only seen oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet you. You too. I've uh, never known anybody in Australia before, so it's quite a, a blessing. Oh, you can tick that <laughs> It's a new there. experience, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tick that off the bucket list. <laughs> did, you know, did, did you know anybody in Texas before? Uh, no, no. I've heard that uh, I think James Trim's in Texas, I think. Mm, is that right? I know who he is, but is he in Texas? Yeah. James Trim? I think he might be. He's the one with the, uh, the Bayat Had Hadin. He's the one that exonerated Lou scripturally whenever the Messianic Hall of Shame attacked him. I didn't know where he was from. I don't know where he's from. I know that Brother Todd Efren is here. Okay. Yeah. He's the one who translated Matit Yahu and Chizeon, yeah. uh, the Revelations, mm. and, and uh, Daniel, too, Daniel. Yeah. Um, oh, he's actually a pretty good musician, too. I got to, I got to work with him for about a month. It was an interesting yeah. time for us, and he is a really good guitar player. What do you play? Uh, I... I Started out when I was a kid playing piano, and I do that a little, but not much. Uh, and then I went into bass guitar, and I don't have one anymore. But now I play guitar, yeah. and uh, I, I'm trying to learn the violin. But I'm trying to learn so many things, I'm not getting very far very fast. For <laughs> what about you, you? Know you play the guitar only, or yeah, what else do you? Pretty much just guitar, guitar vocal. Right. If you get the guitar down really well, and it sounds like you do, you, you can learn piano really easy. It's basically just the same thing laid out in front of you. Yeah. Uh, I know that people have a, usually have a real simple time going from, from guitar to piano. Yeah. Oh, you sing too, right? Yeah. Yeah. My wife's the yep. real singer. But I, you um, play voice. <laughs> <laughs> I have my mouth and sounds come out. They're not always good, but... <laughs> Yeah. You got a real humble spirit, brother. I got They're in tune anyway. They don't always sound good, but they're in tune. <laughs> <laughs> but they sound good in my head. That's the main thing. So, so you guys own a business, right? I mean, you. Uh... Yeah, I'm in the salon right now in the back room. I have a computer at the salon, and we've had to upgrade to a computer at home as well, just because there's uh -huh. so much going on. And uh, see, so yeah, I'm in the back room of the salon now. Got, yeah. You probably can't see. It's in reverse. There's a, a hair product girl hanging from a curtain there. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I see. Yeah. It's an, S okay. factor. it's an S factor. They're just hair products. So. Is that uh, is that your preferred brand there, the one yeah. that you all mark? Yeah. Nice. Hey, hey, second, how I you style your snazzy hair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tina likes your hair. Oh, yeah. oh, hey, look at that. I just made you big. Okay, that's a lot better. You were in, the, you were in a screen about this big on my computer. Yeah. Now, now I I, I didn't realize I could maximize. This is pretty cool. I got to yeah. say, people have been asking me for a couple of years, do you Skype? And I'm like, <laughs> I just learned how to type. I don't <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed I can even answer emails. I'm know? amazed he got this running all by himself. <laughs> Thank you. See, she has faith in me. Yeah. <laughs> did, you end up to, did you end up ordering your thing from Australia okay? They wouldn't yeah. send it to us. 
Oh. They wouldn't. They said we don't ship outside of the Australia. Oh. I think I think like well, it crossed our mind to say, hey, Mark, <laughs> will you get it and then ship it to us? But I think it would cost like twice as much as the item yeah. just to ship. It. It's pretty so. heavy, I would imagine. It's iron, so. Yeah, it's for Tina's business. She's a massage therapist. Yeah. And uh, she just started, uh, she just opened her own clinic, basically. Yeah. And, uh. There's this one wall when you walk into the room where, where she does her massage uh, that really needs something on it. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like just begging yeah. for something to be on it. And it's a lot of empty space. Yeah. It needs something. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll find something else. Yeah. Oh, I hope. That would have been perfect, but it's half I'm thinking of putting away. the tree of life on it. That might yeah. be a good thing to do so so you and amy worked together in the salon we did um but uh we had the children in daycare and my eldest son started going to school and we just hated that whole routine of everything so she's at home now with five kids and i'm um i've got a couple of staff here that help me and uh are, so are they taking care of clients right now and you're no you're, you're, no my uh uh, main apprentice, my full-time apprentice, went to Fiji this week for a wedding. So I've been running it myself this week. Mm. Mm. And there's some other young girls that come in as part of the school just one day a week. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, so you you teach as well. You don't just take care of clients, but you also teach students. Well, not not really. You have apprentices, so you you just teach them how to do what you do and. You set up a cheaper price so that clients can come in if they can't afford, say, my haircuts. They can come in and get cheap haircuts, and the girls can practice. And you know, are you yeah. expensive? <laughs> um, I don't think I am. No, <laughs> not for Sydney. Yeah. Uh, no. Reasonably priced. Reasonably priced, I think. <laughs> this girl made eighty bucks in an hour today. I mean, I got you can't. I don't know. I mean, you can't beat that. That's pretty good. Hey, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> she, uh, she, she got a really good client. Mm. In. Oh, fantastic. Um, you, so uh, yeah. I was basically trying to get to. I'm not sure if I'm keeping you from anything. I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I have. But, a, I have a client at four, which is a half an hour away. But I, uh, I just locked the door so no one can sneak up on me. So. Oh. <laughs> so <I thought. laughs> it's very kind of you to take time you know i'm i'm supposed to be i met uh, a brother in lubbock while i was visiting my dad last week and um my dad goes to this club uh it's just part of his routine you know for de-stressing or whatever and uh he knows this fellow who's all, uh, a messianic i i don't know if he identifies himself as nazarene i'm not even sure if he knows who what the Torah Institute is, but, uh, we had a long conversation just about, you know, love for Messiah. And he said he was giving a, um, a Torah portion on carbon, you know, sacrifices, uh, this weekend and told me I could Skype in. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I guess it's time. I guess it's time I have to learn how to do that. Um, yeah. It just seemed like the right thing. We got this computer that, uh, you know, came equipped for it or whatnot, and so it was it seemed like the right thing to do. Mm. Um, and I, I just, I didn't want it to be my first time. I actually called a couple of people uh, who I think would have been available, and nobody would answer their phone. And I was going, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was like. Wait a second. I know that. I know that Mark <laughs> does that with Lou. So I guess that means they they Skype. I, should I should I make my first call? You know, halfway around the world. Why not? Was, God, I'm glad Why I not? did. Yeah. I'm glad I did. I mean, <laughs> we got pretty good reception too. Is that is that normal or? Yeah, this is great. I can't. Is it a delay? Yeah. yeah. This is great. I think it's amazing that, like, uh, you know, the 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 response time seems to be instantaneous. As far as I can tell, mm -hmm. you're hearing me in real time, and as far as it seems like, because you're responding as soon as I'm done talking. Yeah, same. Mm. It's or back and forth, you know. 
it, it seems like what I'm saying to you is getting to you just as soon as, as you're finished with what you're saying. Yeah. That's, yeah. There's no delay at all. I, I would have expected there to be like, you know, five yeah. second delay while it transmits. So what are you studying? What do you, you said you're a student. Uh, right now, let's see, I, I started doing... I started doing carpentry about five years ago, and um, that was because I, I really didn't have a trade growing up. I wasn't taught a trade. My dad and my mom were both uh, doctors, and uh, the only way to learn the family business with them was to go to medical school, of which I have no interest whatsoever. Um, and uh, I just kind of, you know, was led by... Uh, the wind that blows you, I suppose, you know, I've come to understand much better now that I was being led by, by father, but, uh, by you, but, um, uh, I didn't really have a trade and he, he brought us to a place very much in a divine way, uh, where I was able to learn carpentry for a while. And mm -hmm. it taught me a trade that I really do like, but, um, it's not very lucrative and we got four kids. So, you know, we can't really, starve four months out of the year so um i've decided I've, I've now started going back to school to learn to be an auto technician okay. you know a mechanic mm. and that's that's what i'm studying right now and it's going pretty good i hope to be getting an asc certification by the end of not next month gregorian but the month after mm. on the roman calendar uh I guess that would probably be what month three in the Hebrew calendar, mm. probably mid month three in the Hebrew calendar, right around the time of Tabuot, I think. Mm, of course. Uh, mm. uh, or Shabbat, I mean. Um, so. Uh, He's a student of a lot of things. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice, I think, to have a job where, you know, we're in high demand. You know. We're all students of many things, aren't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think we should ever stop learning. Yeah. Mm. Well, give it some thought. If you got anything on your mind or your heart you want to say or on a weekly or fortnightly or even basis, we should we should do something. We've got a connection now. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it can be in any way, shape, or form you want. You can either chat like this or you can hang green screens behind you you name it we can do it <laughs> is that what you and lou do yeah yeah he actually hangs a screen behind him to get that to happen adam's just got a new setup where he went and he actually got a professional one and he's tinkering with that because uh we've been recording through the skype for about a, uh, just under a year but uh yeah adam was getting a bit uh, jack of the jack of all trades and no, he was getting a bit. He was getting a bit annoyed with the um, stuttering oh. and the quality, and uh, and so he f we film on both ends now, and he sends me his end, and I put them together. So we use real, oh, we use real cameras, and we just use the Skype to talk. So you're pretty you're pretty tech savvy. It seems like I mean you no seem Adam really... is. <laughs> well, you're putting together the videos, aren't you, for, uh, for yeah. a lot of these things? Yeah. Not just the Torah talk, but I'm talking about the, uh, the seminar videos and, and some of that stuff. I saw the work you did on uh, Season of the Witch and all that. <laughs> that was you, right? That was insane, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a crazy one. <laughs> Got yeah. some good feedback from that, too. Oh, yeah. I've been heartbroken <laughs> lately. I've had to take all that strange stuff off the internet because of all the copyright. <laughs> So, uh, oh, like, really? Are people, a, people contacting you saying that's not yours? Yeah, things like that. YouTube oh. has opinions about stuff. So. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I had no idea. That's all right. Oh. We've got to make it above board. So that's good. So, well, you know, it's, mm. it's, it, it was fun while it lasted. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I, I, as far as, like, you know, doing anything as a recording, I, I don't know. A lot of people ask me when I'm talking, you know, because uh, Lou will um, send things along to me when he gets, I guess, just overwhelmed with the load. And, you know, I'll do my best to help out. And a lot of times it's really just counseling stuff. But I'll have people ask me, well, you know, will you send me some of the stuff you've written? And, um, you know, pretty much everything I write is 
in an email form. I don't really write articles, and I, I'm not really sure why I would because it, Lou pretty much wrote it all down already. Right. <laughs> you know, like mm. I'd love to write my own article, but I'd basically just be rewriting what he wrote. Yeah. That's it. Most of the relevant information is there. I guess there's a couple of new topics, and a, a lot of the emails that, that I'll write will breach things that he never talked about. Uh, you know, and, and actually cause uh, cause me to do additional independent research, um, which is which is good. Oh, I might be making noise with that thing, uh, which is good because you know it keeps you fresh and, and helps you to remember. I, I in learning stuff, I think I've come to realize that it's not so much how you how much you know, no. it's how good you are at finding information. Mm. You know that's that's really where the academia and the, uh, the 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 intelligence quotient comes into it. I mean, who can remember everything? Mm. You know, but uh, but if you really are good at finding resource resource material and tracking down information, you can find out whatever it is you want to know. Mm. But you also, have, you know, I mean, we have to use the spirit of discernment because not everything that's written down is. Mm. Accurate mm. to what Yahoo would want. You mm. know. So <laughs> totally. take things where the grain of salt mm. is. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's wonderful. I uh, I got a shock when you came online. I thought you were a real old bugger. Wow, you're a young <laughs> guy like me. <laughs> Oh, I, I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't. Uh, you know, make you spill your coffee or nothing. <laughs> No, it's great. It's great, really good. Encouraging. Okay. I, 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 people in here. I, I occasionally talk to uh, uh, you know some folks that Lou sends along. I get they'll ask me a question. I'm just like, you know what? I don't know how to write this down in an email. If you can call me, why don't we do that? Yeah. You know, and and they'll call me, and they're like, you don't sound that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, not, mm. but. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I went through a lot of different things spiritually, which is why I think I ultimately wound up here. You know, I was called out of the Christian congregations, out of the circus mm. at a pretty young age, but I did not go straight to the truth, mind you. I actually uh, studied magic for, for a number of years. And um, it turns out you had a purpose for that, too. I never stopped believing in the messiah that was an interesting thing it was that my parents are christians and uh i had accepted messiah by you know that false name albeit but i had accepted him in my heart when i was four i um i prayed a prayer and i meant it brother i meant it hmm. i don't know how i knew but i knew i needed him the thing was I asked in my heart, right after I said, you know, come into my heart, I, I asked in my heart, why did I do that? Mm. You know, I didn't understand it. Yeah. And, well, it's been about 16 years teaching me the answer to that question. <laughs> you know, it was, it was mm. probably about 16 years later I first started. I had a Seventh-day Adventist. Do you know what Seventh-day Adventism is? Mm. I had a Seventh-day Adventist friend who was teaching me about the Sabbath, and it kind of went from there um i heard a couple of messianic teachers talking about the sabbath and uh there was one named uh, michael rude i don't know if you know who he is he was mm. talking about, he was talking about the name but he didn't really know what it was uh you know and a lot of that piqued my interest but um i i don't think i really and, and i did start practicing the sabbath but uh I don't think I really started latching on to the heart, the spirit behind it, until, um, well, until I met Lou. Because it, mm. for me, it was, I knew I disagreed with a lot of things. You know, I, I knew I disagreed with a lot of things, but that didn't necessarily mean that I had any real love in my heart that I could that I could use for anything and show people. Um, I think I believed in my heart of hearts that love was not all that strong. I, I really knew that love was the answer. I, I really knew that. And that's one of the reasons how I, I think I eventually uh, opened my heart and 
it led me to actually pray that prayer, that all important prayer, which is not a man, Father, but you, you know, you being the Almighty, you can show me who you are. It, it, please do. It turns out that's what he was waiting for. <laughs> Mm. I prayed that prayer, you know, uh, the information and, and it, well, he reveals himself to, to whomever he chooses and, and he will hide himself away from, from someone if he chooses. It's like whenever people are trying to discover him in a scientific laboratory, mm. you know, if he does not choose to reveal himself in that way, they're not going to find, him. Yeah. you know, he would have to... We're not going to usurp that and just accidentally stumble across Yahoo in a scientific laboratory. If he wants to reveal himself in that way, he will. If he doesn't, he won't. Mm. You know, I, I like something that I heard Brother Lou say on, uh, uh, it was a seminar about evolution versus creation. Mm. He said, you know, where's your proof? <laughs> Prove to me that Yahoo doesn't exist. Mm. <laughs> That's you know, for atheists. You know, mm -hmm. to a, to an atheist, yeah. prove to me Yahuwah doesn't exist. Mm. You know, it's it's interesting because it, you can't, it, it's not a valid argument. Prove to me Yahuwah exists. Prove to me he doesn't exist. It, it's, it's, it's asinine either way you look at it. You can't, you don't do that. It's like saying, um, if you had a, de a, a person who never spoke around you, whom you'd never heard speak, and refused to talk, could you prove that he could speak? <laughs> yeah. you know? No, you couldn't. Mm. That's Yahuwah. Mm. You know? yeah. If you'd never heard him talk, mm. and he chose never to speak, you can't prove that he can talk. Yeah. So, what do you do? <laughs> it's it's an argument like that and it, it just it, it's it's meant to be divisive you know it's meant to try to shoot holes in whomever's theory and you can understand even why it's done though because a lot of people are very insecure when it comes to religion they should mm. be mm. you know mm. religion is just man's way of controlling one another and and usurping power you know mm. it, 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 somewhere along the lines we can lose track of the fact that it's a personal relationship mm our creator we can we it's too easy it yeah. seems you know we we become what lou calls fruit testers you know and, yeah. well i've got pretty good at my relationship good enough as far as i can ascertain and uh well i guess it's about time for me to determine whether or not you're doing a good job sir <laughs> you know what no yeah, I, I have a brother who's going through a really hard time right now, and he told me what was going on with him, and he said, don't judge me, brother, but why would I judge you? You know, mm. If you'd asked me before you had done this thing, I would have told you you shouldn't. Mm. But that doesn't mean I don't love you anymore. You mm. know, What's going on here is really between you and the Father. Mm. That's, that's his business with you. He's going to deal with you on that. Mm. You know? uh, but... But our relationship has to remain a blessing. Hopefully, it will remain uh, a glory unto His name. You know, mm. uh, and when when brothers get together like this, whenever we have uh, mm. you know fellowship, I know that, and it's in love. I know that uh, that that's that's got to be a pleasing thing to Him. He works so hard, and it's so rare. I know it is. I mean, I don't know mm. how often people really get to experience things like that. You know, mm. where where it's not just a facade it's deep you know it's in mm. here you know, i love you brother and i would mm. I'd, I'd live or die you know for my brothers and sisters live or die whatever it takes yeah, yeah. Mm. that's i mean there's friendship you know and mm. i know a lot of people experience that but when when people are spiritually dead i don't know that they really understand what it means to have yahusha at the core you know that rock to stand on <laughs> It keeps our keeps me and my wife's relationship alive because I know she loves him more than me, mm. and she knows I love him more than her. Mm. That's the only one. I mean, beyond that, this is my favorite person. <laughs> I've met a lot of people. I'm not trying to brag. I've met a lot of people, but this one's my favorite. Yeah. She's, she's a good person. I know. Yeah. Uh, she's a. Uh, 
she's been my best friend for a long time. Yeah. Uh, how long have you and Amy been married? We've been married uh, no, nearly nine years. Nine years at the end of this year. Wow. Nine years. About eight, eight and a half years. Yeah. Congratulations. That's great. Mm. That's, that's a long while. Is yeah. that as long as you've been together or as long as you've been married? As long as we've been married. We... We had a we had a strange courtship. We uh, we were in the Christian circus, and we didn't believe our doctrines didn't involve dating. You weren't allowed to date. Uh, weren't allowed yeah. to, you weren't allowed to kiss. It didn't stop us, but didn't weren't allowed to date. And uh, you know, and so she came along to a couple of the meetings with her mum and made it clear she was only there for me. <laughs> and, uh, so we started chatting for a few times and. Uh, after a while, I just sort of noticed that she was really into me, and so I took her out to dinner one time, and I said, "Look, you're into me. I can see, you know, and I'm really into you. Why don't we get married?" <laughs> yeah. And uh, she, uh, she's seven years younger than me, and uh, she was bedazzled, and so was I. And uh, so we, um, we, we spoke to the parents and said, "Yeah, we're going to get married." So, and uh, about. Six months to a year later, we did, and so we didn't really date at all. We just uh, so we're going to get married. We're going to get married. I said, well, people can know each other, live together, do all that stuff for ten years, and then get married and split up. So, you know, if we decide to get married, we're going to go through all the hardships that married people go through anyway. Why not let's just do it? And uh, so we have. And uh, apparently, you made the right move. Yeah, and I didn't have a clue about anything. <laughs> I didn't know uh, how to <laughs> handle handle somebody just wanting me all the time. Like, like the lo I didn't know how to handle love. Lo I used to just uh, anybody who would love me or suffer me, I just used to abuse, like just take for granted, you know. So to have somebody who's you know sitting there waiting for my attention while I'm doing all this crazy computer stuff, and she's sitting there waiting and waiting, and I, I didn't know how to handle somebody who wanted my attention. So he gave, and we never decided that she wanted lots of children, but I didn't mind either way. We didn't, I always said just leave it up to the creator, who had a different name at that point. But, uh, yes. <laughs> or so we thought. He changed it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to do that? <laughs> yeah. Now, whenever I get frustrated, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. It's a whole different, a whole different thing. Yeah. That's right. How so, did yeah. you guys find out about the Natarim? Yeah, we, how uh, did you get fossilized customs in Australia? Wow. We, we were in an Indonesian circus, and some, suddenly talking to Chris the other day about this, this uh, little Indonesian man wasn't the pastor; it was another guy. He gave Chris a copy of fossilized customs, and we were having a few hardships and little conflicts within the circus, and. Uh, we uh, it was really full on our experience. We had a prayer meeting one night, worship meeting another night, you know, band practice another night, like almost every single night. And then we'd have a late night in the salon working, and then you know, every single night nearly was just different meetings, and like it was a full on experience. And anyway, Chris got a copy of this fossilized customs, and um, because as you know, when you're Christians, so many books go through your hands, and oh, yeah, another book, you know, I'll get to it, another book, you know. And uh, that's he, how it was for us. <laughs> yeah, he read it and it blew his brains out. And we uh, we were in a little assembly with him, uh, sort of, and the Indonesian circus as well. We were in another little assembly together, and the Indonesians didn't really want to go along with it, and they were starting to put pressure on, and it was a lot of pressure. And so we ended up splitting from that, and we just stayed together, and we kept studying fossilized customs and going along with there. And, We'd made, cans to, uh, made plans to move up to Cairns and uh, we went up there for a holiday and had a look because it's about two and a half thousand, two and a half thousand kilometres or what, up north. So we uh, went up there and loved it and so we, we moved up there just a bit before the others. Um, yeah. But now they're all up there and we've come back. So yeah, wow. we're just, that's just where it started. And wow. we just wanted more, 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 more. So, I I can understand that. Yeah, you know, I, all the friends and family were upset and broke away, and you say things you regret, <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, that, you know, hmm. that was that thing. Like I said, go tell everybody you know. <laughs> That's yeah. he seems to get so many that way, you know, hmm. because he knows that we're going to get alienated through it. We're not ready to share what we've learned, and we still don't understand the thinking. You know? hmm. We still don't understand the concept of personal relationship. This isn't about you know my relationship with anyone else. It's about mine with him and. You know, if if he can use that, if he can use me and use the spirit through me to uh, to reach somebody, well, I mean, that's an honor. That's great, you mm. know. But uh, he he's really clever the way he does it. You know, Shatan mm. will take that one truth that you're supposed to share people share with people, and uh, you know, if you don't say anything, um, their blood's on your hands, and he'll twist it into meaning you've got no time. Mm. You know, you're in control of this. It's not mm. actually the father in control. Mm. You've got to do something. Mm. And we're so young in the faith. Mm. We don't know that. We don't know that we're not supposed to be taking the reins and saying, no, it's me doing this, you know, and try to get it done. We feel obligated because we've all read that part of the, the scripture. Be mm. bold. You know, be bold. <laughs> get out there. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm. We have to allow ourselves time to heal. <laughs> you know, we've been, mm. as humans, we've been Not damaged perfect. by this process. Mm. Oh, we, we've got to heal for a little while. And I, I tell people, you know, that, that, are, uh, that are new to the faith, he can use you just as mightily as anyone else. Mm. It's not that you have to wait. Mm. It's that you have to let him be in control. Mm. He's going to use you when he wants to use you, you know. Yeah. Beyond that, just work on your relationship with him. Just get mm. straight with him. Mm. You know, if he puts it on your heart to share with your family that Christmas is pagan, well, you better do it. Yeah. But it's going to be in love. It's not going to be something that be, can be uh, misconstrued as condemnation. And when we first come into it, it's we've got this, you know, this stuff. I'm learning this now, and now the whole world really ought to be learning this. Because I want to set everybody else I'm ready, free, too. You know, I'm ready for you to know, brother. <laughs> you know, but it doesn't work that way. The, the <laughs> spirit has to be hmm. Yeah. They can't understand any of it unless Yahuwah lets them understand. Hmm. He, will, he only reveals himself to those whom he chooses to reveal himself. Yeah. Hmm. And we can sit until we're blue in the face. They won't understand if their heart hasn't been prepared. Yeah. 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 Got, we have three minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Got three minutes left. Yeah. Well, I think um, uh, worldwide, uh, the brothers and sisters are always wanting encouragement, and because a lot of them are by themselves, some of them aren't even married oh. um, by themselves. So I think conversations like this and everything. Why don't we do? Why don't we? Uh, you think on it and pray on it, and I'll do the same, and we'll 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 see if we can get together and do something because i mean it's it's more food for people it's more encouragement for people yeah i've got no idea how to record or do any of that stuff you don't have to. You See, I'm, rec I'm recording cool. right now because it does it automatically <laughs> oh really okay so with if you your, want so with your permission this is episode this one <laughs> Or this conversation, uh, that's great. I'm, yeah. I'm just really happy to get to know you for a minute, brother. And I, yeah. like I said, I, I didn't even realize it, but you, you didn't have any idea what I looked like before yeah. tonight. That's, uh, yeah. that's a shocker. It's, it's, it's yeah. interesting. I, I feel kind of like, um, well, not to turn it like into celebrity or whatever, but you know, I mean, you get to, you get to know people. You see them in, in certain ways, that, uh, you know, repeatedly. I, I, I hear about. Um, I heard somebody talking. I can't remember who it was. It was an actor, a Hollywood actor, and he was he was commenting on on having met somebody that uh, you know came up to him as a fan and that kind of thing, and mm -hmm. you know, and they were talking to him like like they were his best friend, and he's going, you know, listen, I understand that that you might feel really close to me. You've seen me a lot, but you need to know so I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met you. You know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess uh, using that as an analogy, like yeah. I said, I it's like uh, it's good to be face to face. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just never really occurred to me. I, I don't know yeah. why. I mean, we've talked on uh, we've talked on emails enough times and, and stuff mm. like that. But, uh, yeah. You know, in, in uh, Cajun country, you know what a Cajun is? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay, over there in Louisiana, Louisiana. Uh, over there in Cajun country, they, they don't say, I'm glad to meet you. They say, I'm glad for you to meet me. <laughs> so uh, yeah. in true Cajun form, let's put it that way, you know, uh, uh, I'm glad for you to meet me this day, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you too, hombre. <clears throat> you, 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 would say, you would say, well, I'm glad for you to meet me too. I'm glad for you to meet me too. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to say goodbye now, brother. <laughs> All right. And we got to think about. We got to think of a name for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a good night. It was wonderful to actually. How about talk nothing to and you everything? Face to face. Nothing and everything. Good. <laughs> Please feel to meet me. <laughs> well, we don't have. We, yeah, we don't have. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a set uh, uh, topic, but it's just uh, you know two they're, brothers talking. They're the best ones. I, I know Lou. Lou is uh, capable of uh, dealing with topical conversations. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's 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 a pretty good thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a, there's enough people out there teaching. I don't know. I think I think to some degree, uh, uh, you know, just having fellowship is yeah. is worth it. Uh, yeah. yeah, we don't get much of that. <laughs> no, same. Hmm. Father, I really appreciate and and glorify and just thank you for giving us this opportunity to fellowship with Brother Mark. You know, yeah. may it be a glory and an honor and a blessing to you. Mark, it, it really has been cool getting to meet you for the first time. Um, I, I, hope, do it again soon. I hope it's the, yeah. the, the first time, not the last, or, or, oh, or but the yeah. imagination. I don't know when's good time to get in touch with you, but I guess you have my Skype number now, too. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. You? Yeah. I guess I, I have a so. Skype address. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Give me a call sometime, or, yeah. or I'll reach out to you, too. We'll, we'll, we'll on at all the kinks. All right. Yeah. Shalom, brother. Shalom. Love you guys. Love, Love you too. too. See you later. Good night.